Consider a region bounded by functions, like the blue region, R3. Now, imagine rotating this region around the y-axis. It would form a solid called a solid of revolution. In this video, I will show you how to calculate the volume of a solid of revolution. The line x equals zero is the y-axis, and when you rotate the blue region around the y-axis, you get a solid that's like a cylinder with a bowl carved out of the top of it. A washer is a disc with a hole in it, and that's what you get when you take a slice of this solid. We can use washers like this one to calculate the volume of the solid by integrating or adding the washers to form the volume. Because the washers are stacked vertically, ultimately we will have to integrate with respect to y. For that reason, we need to rewrite the functions in terms of y. To rewrite the parabola in terms of y, we need to solve for x. Let's take the square root of both sides, and we get x is equal to the square root of y. Normally, I would say plus or minus, but we are going to stick to the first quadrant, so this is fine. We do not need to rewrite the equation y equals x. When this function shows up in our calculations, we will simply use y. Finding the volume of a solid like this is a three-step process. Step one is to find an expression for both radii of the washer. We need an expression for the outer radius, which I will call big R, and the inner radius, which I will call small r. Let's start by finding an expression for the big radius. When a radius is horizontal, you can find the expression by subtracting the function on the right minus the function on the left. In this case, the function on the right is 1, and the function on the left is 0. 1 minus 0 is just 1. Now let's find an expression for the small radius. Again, we can find an expression by subtracting the function on the right minus the function on the left. In this case, the function on the right is the parabola, which is the square root of y, and the function on the left is 0. Radical y minus 0 is just radical y. So that was step 1. Step 2 is to find an expression for the area of the washer. You can picture the area of a washer as the area of a big disk minus the area of a small disk. In other words, the area of a washer will be pi big R squared minus pi small r squared. Since we already have an expression for big R and small r, we can turn this into an expression for the area of the washer by writing pi big R squared minus pi small r squared. Let's simplify this a little. 1 squared is just 1, so that means we just have pi. If you square a radical, the radical and the 2 cancel each other out. So that just leaves y, which I will write as pi times y. So this is an expression for the area of the washer. The last step is to find an expression for the volume by integrating the area. Since we already have an expression for the area, all we need to do now is integrate. When you integrate the area of the washer, you are adding up all of the washers to form the volume. Since the washers are stacked up vertically, we are integrating with respect to y. And because the washers are stacked up from 0 to 1, these are the limits of integration. Let's use our graphing calculator to evaluate this integral. To integrate, hit the math button and choose option 9. We are integrating from 0 to 1. And then we had pi minus pi y, but we have to use x. And that's it. 1.571 if you round up, but the College Board would also accept 1.570. That's called truncating. This is the volume of the solid of revolution. Just for practice, 
Let's evaluate this integral without a calculator. First of all, there's a pi in both terms. So I'm going to factor out a pi as a GCF, and that will leave behind 1 minus y. So I'm going to leave the pi way out in front of the integral. The antiderivative of 1 is y, and then the y will become y squared, dividing by the new exponent gives me negative 1 half. I'm going to leave the pi outside of the parentheses as I apply the limits of integration, 0 to 1. This tells me to find the value at 1 minus the value at 0. So here's the value at 1 minus the value at 0. I can tell because there's a y in both terms, obviously the value at 0 will just be 0. 1 squared is just 1, so I'm going to end up with 1 minus 1 half. And 1 minus a half is 1 half. So I'm going to have 1 half pi, or simply pi over 2. In number 46, we will rotate the blue region R3 around the line x equals 1. When you rotate R3 around the line x equals 1, you get a solid that's shaped like an inverted funnel. A slice of the solid will be a disk, and we can use disks like this one to calculate the volume of the solid. Because the disks are stacked vertically, ultimately we will have to integrate with respect to y. Therefore, we need all functions that we use to be written in terms of y. So as we saw in a previous problem, this parabola can be written as the square root of y. Finding the volume of the solid is a three-step process. Step one is to find an expression for the radius of a disk. For a horizontal radius, you can find an expression by subtracting the function on the right minus the function on the left. In this case, the function on the right is 1, and the function on the left is the square root of y. Step 2 is to find an expression for the area of a disk, but the area of a disk is always pi r squared. Since we already have an expression for r, we can turn this into an expression for area by writing pi r squared. The last step is to write an expression for volume by integrating the area. Since we already have an expression for the area, all we have to do is integrate this. When you integrate the area of a disk, you are adding up all of the disks to form the volume. Since the disks are stacked up vertically, we are integrating with respect to y. And because the disks are stacked between 0 and 1, these are the limits of integration. Now let's evaluate this integral on the graphing calculator. To integrate, hit the math button and choose option 9. We are integrating from 0 to 1. And then we have pi times, and uh, it was 1 minus the square root of y squared. So 1 minus the square root, I have to use x, and then close the parentheses and squared. And that's it. 0 0.524 if you round up, or 0 0.523 if you truncate. And this is the volume of the solid of revolution. For number 47, we will rotate the yellow region, R2, around the y-axis. When you rotate R2 around the y-axis, it makes a solid that's like a bowl with a cone carved out of the top. A slice of the solid will be a washer, a disc with a hole in it. And we can use washers like this one to find the volume of the solid. Because the washers are stacked vertically, ultimately we will have to integrate with respect to y. Therefore, instead of using x squared, 
If it comes up in calculations, we will use the square root of y. For the line, we will simply use y. Finding the volume of the solid is a three-step process. Step one is to find an expression for both radii of the washer. We need an expression for the radius of the outer disk, which I will call big R, and we will need an expression for the radius of the inner disk, the hole, which I will call small r. Let's start with big R. When the radius is horizontal, we can find an expression by subtracting the function on the right minus the function on the left. In this case, the function on the right is the square root of y, while the function on the left is 0. Radical y minus 0 is just radical y. Now let's write an expression for the small radius. We can find the expression by subtracting the function on the right minus the function on the left. In this case, the function on the right is y, and the function on the left is 0 y minus 0 is just y. Step 2 is to find an expression for the area of a washer. The area of a washer can be thought of as the area of a big disk minus the area of a small disk. In other words, the area of a washer is pi big R squared minus pi small r squared. Since we already have an expression for big R and small r, we can turn this into an expression for area by writing pi big R squared minus pi small r squared. This is an expression for the area of a washer. However, let's simplify this a tiny bit. When you square a radical, the radical goes away. So I can write my area as pi y minus pi y squared. The last step is to find an expression for the volume of the solid by integrating the area of the washer. Since we already have an expression for the area of the washer, all we have to do is integrate. When you integrate the area of a washer, you are adding up all of the washers to form the volume. Since the washers are stacked vertically, we will integrate with respect to y. And because the washers are stacked between 0 and 1, then these are the limits of integration. Let's use our graphing calculator to evaluate the integral. To integrate, hit the math button and choose option 9. We are integrating from 0 to 1. And we had pi y, we have to use x on the calculator, minus pi y squared, and we'll put x squared. And that's it. 0 0.524 if you round up, or 0 0.523 if you truncate. Either is fine. This is the volume of the solid of revolution. For number 48, we will rotate the yellow region, R2, around the line x equals 1. When you rotate region R2 around the line x equals 1, it forms a solid in the shape of a cone with an inverted funnel carved out of the middle of it. A slice of the solid will be a washer, a disk with a hole in it. We can use washers like this one to calculate the volume of the solid. Because the washers are stacked vertically, ultimately we will have to integrate with respect to y. For that reason, we will have to write all functions in terms of y. So instead of x squared, we will use the square root of y. And instead of x, we will use y. Finding the volume of the solid is a three-step process. Step one is to find an expression for both radii of the washer. We need an expression for the radius of the outer disk, which I will call big R. And we need an expression for the radius of the inner disk, which I will call small r. Let's start with big R. When the radius is horizontal, you can find an expression by subtracting the function on the right minus the function on the left. In this case, the function on the right is 1, 
and the function on the left is y. Now let's find an expression for the small radius by again subtracting the function on the right minus the function on the left. In this case, the function on the right is 1, and the function on the left is the square root of y. Step 2 is to find an expression for the area of a washer. The area of a washer can be thought of as the area of a big disk minus the area of a small disk. In other words, the area of a washer is pi big R squared minus pi small r squared. Since we already have an expression for big R and small r, we can turn this into an expression for area by writing pi big R squared minus pi small r squared. The last step is to make an expression for the volume of the solid by integrating the area of the washer. Since we already have the area of the washer, all we have to do is integrate. When you integrate the area of a washer, you are adding up all of the washers to form the volume. Since the washers are stacked vertically, we will integrate with respect to y. Because the washers are stacked between 0 and 1, these are the limits of integration. Let's use the graphing calculator to evaluate this integral. To integrate, hit the math button and choose option 9. We are integrating from 0 to 1. And first we have pi. Then we are multiplying times 1 minus y, but we're going to have to use x instead. And that is squared. And then we have minus pi times 1 minus the square root of y. And again, we have to use x on the calculator. Oh, that is squared. And that's it. 0 0.524 if you round up, or 0 0.523 if you truncate. And this is the volume of the solid of revolution.